When you think of a hard geometry dash level, what comes to your mind? Many people would probably think of levels like Bloodbath or Bloodlust, but have you ever wondered just how demons began? For most people, it's easy to think that they've always been a part of the game, but what if I told you that wasn't the case? In this video, we will be taking a look into the history of the hardest demons, and how they eventually became shaped into the seemingly impossible demons we know today. The hardest demon has been traded dozens of times throughout the years, and for the beginning, we're going to have to go all the way back to when the game came out. Geometry Dash was released on August 13th, 2013, but as far as demons go, we wouldn't have to wait long enough. When the game came out, the demon difficulty didn't exist initially. It wasn't until two months after the game's release that we would see the catalyst for the iconic difficulty win. And that honor goes to a Korean player named M2 Call. M2 Call was probably one of the first people to ever play Geometry Dash, not too far behind from other very early players like Darn. 2013 was a very interesting time for the game, and almost everyone playing had no idea that they would shape the history for the game and its future. M2 Call didn't have many levels, with his only level so far being a 7 star. To put into perspective how old this is, modern level IDs usually have around 8 digits, but for M2 Call's first level, the ID was not 8 digits, not 6 digits, not even 4. His first level had an ID of 828, which was within the first 1000 levels ever created, and shortly after, M2 Call was ready to add on to that number, and in October, he quickly began work on his newest level. But his newest level wasn't going to be a 7 star. He was planning on making a 9 star level, which at the time was the hardest difficulty any level could obtain. And to M2 Call's surprise, he never ended up getting a 9 star. Instead, he had done something legendary. And on October 17th, he released his newest level. This is Demon Park. Demon Park was easily the hardest verified level at the time, with the oldest recording of the level still existing as well. Hard timings and confusing sections were enough to make it stand out, so much in fact that it set a new bar in difficulty never seen before in the game. Demon Park was the hardest level Robtop had ever rated up to this point, and because of this, Robtop decided to give Demon Park a special difficulty, creating Demon, named after the level that pioneered the new era of difficulty. And now, Demons were now the hardest rate somebody could obtain. It was a small but exciting time for the game, as players could now strive to create new Demons, with insane 9 stars no longer being the hardest rate. There were more demons than Demon Park being created, but nothing could top Demon Park's level of difficulty. But all of that would change when a player who had created many levels before wanted to make a level that could challenge Demon Park. He was also one of the first people to ever play the game. And his name is Darnok. Darnok was one of the most well-known players in the game, being high up on the creating leaderboard early on. And in some time in November of 2013, Darnok published To the Grave, a level that for the time was a good level. But as with many levels from this time, the community didn't really appreciate hard levels nearly as much as they do now. So for a lot of the early hardest demons, they have many, many dislikes. The level isn't even on Darnok's account either, which makes it even more difficult to find. As for the level goes, the level features lots of fakes, difficult jumps, and for 1.4, it was a really well-made level, and it was just barely harder than Demon Park, claiming the number one spot on the rather small list of demons that existed at the time. But To The Grave would only be the hardest demon for a little under a month. The level to dethrone Darnok's challenging demon would be one of the earliest introductions to memory in the entire game. This is Extreme Park. Extreme Park was uploaded sometime in November of 2013 by an early Korean creator named Ripples, and it quickly became the new hardest demon. Like with Demon Park, 
Extreme Park took the concept of Demon Park and upped the ante quite a bit. While Demon Park had relatively hard memory, Extreme Park pushes it way further, with even more difficult jumps, hard ship sections, and of course, memory corridors. The nature of Extreme Park easily made it harder than To the Grave, and with that, Extreme Park would stand as the hardest demon for a little under a month. We're now in Geometry Dash 1.3, and since the release of Demon Park, the game has seen introductions to a lot of brand new things, like new main levels and an entirely new game mode. The introduction to new gameplay mechanics made for a lot of potential for new types of gameplay, but there haven't really been any new hard demons to utilize the new ball game mode. That is, until a creator named RA7 would change them, with his new demon named BP Knight. BP Knight features some of the earliest extreme ball gameplay in a rated demon, as well as other really difficult gameplay mechanics for the time. Along with its ball timings, the level featured really hard flying for the time as well. Unfortunately for BP Knight, the level would eventually end up getting unrated in February of 2014 because of a secret way that was found two months after the level came out. The secret way being found could very well make this the first rated level with a secret way as well. But regardless of that, the new hardest demon was just around the corner, and it is much, much harder than all of the other levels combined. Published on January 23rd, 2014, the new hardest demon would be published by a guy named Roadboss. This is Heaven and Hell. Heaven and Hell was easily the biggest step up in difficulty that was ever seen in the game, and it wouldn't take long for the level to get rated either, only taking just a few days. The level featured easily the hardest spam in any level, stupidly hard ship sections, and even Clutterfunk Portal straight fly. The level easily was the hardest demon ever made, and was only recently beaten legitimately by a guy named Tuggy in only 7,000 attempts. Nowadays, the level would probably be around top 30, but back then, this was easily impossible. And even if it wasn't impossible, there was still a secret way that any player could pull off with a bit of practice. It's quite long compared to more traditional secret ways, but it's far easier than actually beating the level. The secret way was also very unique, but upon Robtop finding out about it, the level was quickly unreal and everyone forgot about it until Tuggy verified it a mere seven years later. Yes! Oh, it came out of nowhere. It's like early. Oh. But the next demons in the saga would all be dominated by one guy. One Korean creator who sought out to make the hardest possible series of levels. And for a long time, he succeeded. His levels would soon be remade way after they were initially made. We are talking about none other than Son0924. Son was a Korean player who started his career not too long before the creation of the first level in his new series. Published on January 10th, 2014, the first level in the series would become the new hardest demon, being the Hell Zone. Made even more widely known later when Cyclic verified a remake, the Hell Zone featured very hard timings, lots of quad jumps, clutterfunk portals, and really difficult sections overall. It was truly hell. It wouldn't take long for the level to get rated either, and it easily became the hardest demon without question. But Son wasn't done there, and in only two days after creating the Hell Zone, the next installment in the series would be created, and was even rumored to have been verified by Sari. The Hell World featured pretty much everything that the Hell Zone did, but deemed just barely harder. 
Son's third installment into the series, The Hell Dignity, ended up being easier than the other two, but it was still really hard. It was also likely that Son probably had the top three at the time all to himself, but the final installment in the series was easily the hardest out of all of them. And on February 1st, Son uploaded The Hell Origin, and this one was definitely the hardest. Orb flying, ball spam, and orb corridors were new enough gameplay ideas that it easily was harder than all of the other three levels. And so now, Son had the top four. He held the top four for quite a while, but Son would eventually get exposed in April of 2014, and the entire Hell series quickly fell apart. With all of the levels in the series getting unrated, and then later being completely lost. But for the time that Son's levels were rated, there were some other levels that were able to top his. And the first one would come from a legendary creator. And it was also the hardest thing this creator would ever make. This is Stereo Demons. Stereo Demonness was nothing like anyone had seen in the game, and it was even able to rival future Hardest Demons because of many factors. The first was its ridiculously hard flying sections, with one section having close to fixed hitbox straight fly. Second, the UFO spam was really hard. And finally, there was not a single player who could even hope to be good enough at the game to beat it. Everyone in the game played on some mobile device or an emulator, and even if players had a PC version, it was just not happening. And so, Stereo Demonus pretty much instantly became the hardest demon in the game, and it was also released right at the end of 1.5. This level 2 was also recently beaten legitimately by a player named KPG Dylan, taking him over 56,000 attempts and 6 months of non-stop playing. As of right now, KPG Dylan is still the only victor of unnerfed Stereo Demons, and it will probably stay that way for a long time. <laughs> oh my god, I did it! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I fucking did it! Update 1.6 was huge. The first and biggest change is that the new update had finally introduced a main demon level, being one of the most influential levels in the game's history. Along with Clubstep, Electroman Adventures was also introduced. The update also introduced some new blocks, icons, and other things, but only a week after the update's release, somebody would create a level potentially worthy of the number one spot. The level in question would also birth one of the most popular series of levels in all of Geometry Dash. This is Silent Club. Funnily enough, Silent Club was uploaded on April 1st, but it didn't look like an April Fool's joke at all. And for 1.6, the level was really well made, with all of the parts having their own variety. The level was quite unbalanced though, with the main area of difficulty being the hard flying and especially the orb spin. But that wouldn't matter, since the level ended up being raided and instantly dethroned Stereo Demoness as the new hardest demon. But only a short time after, Silent Club ended up being unrated. Not because there was a secret way or anything like that, but rather because it was just simply too hard. And for the coming years, some people tried to verify Silent Club, but nobody was able to beat it. Eventually though, in early 2017, Spanish player SuperX verified a nerfed version of the level that nerfed the orb spam and replaced it with straight fly, 
with some other minor changes to the level as well. This was really impressive for the time, but it was still a nerfed version of the level, so it didn't really count. And for the next couple of years, Silent Club continued to stand without a victor in its unnerfed state. But almost four years after Super Rex verified his version, the unnerfed version was finally legitimately completed by Localizer in October of 2020, taking him over 15,000 attempts to complete. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! But Localizer verified it on the 1.9 servers, so if he wanted it rated, he had to beat the level a second time. And that's exactly what he did. It may have taken him 6,000 more attempts, but in April of 2021, Localizer verified Silent Club again on the official servers, and this time, it was rate worthy. What? 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 No, 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 no. This did not just happen. No, 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 no. I don't believe this. But we're not in 2021, we're in 2014. And with Silent Club being unrated, Stereo Demoness reclaimed its spot once again for the hardest demon. But the next demon to claim the top spot was the most mysterious level of all, and very little is known about it. Element 111 RG was released on April 10th, 2014, and it only really existed for a really short period of time. The level was created for the popular Element series, and an unknown creator named Dark X was tasked to build Element 111 RG along with a couple of other levels in the series. Unfortunately for him, Dark X was only able to create Element 111 RG, and within only a week of the level being rated, it was discovered to have been verified with a secret way as well, once again using a rather unique secret way but people considered that beating the level without the secret way was still deemed harder than Silent Club. The level would be later deleted, with it pretty much being lost forever. And to this day, no one really knows what the finished version even looked like, and we probably never will. But for the next couple of months, there wouldn't be anything new. And for the second time, Stereo Demoness would reclaim the top spot once again. But that would all change when Majaka would nerf Stereo Demoness on October 11th, nearly nine months after the level came out. And upon Stereo Demoness being nerfed, it lost its top spot almost immediately. What was going to take the top spot? Well, you might recognize his name from earlier. Roadboss is back. Ice Carbon Diablo X is one of the most well-known demons ever made, and the level was actually released 7 months before Majako's nerfing of Stereo Demons, being released on May 20th, so it had to wait a while to claim the top spot. But when it did, it took the top spot right away. The level is one of many levels created by Roadbos, and out of the Ice Carbon series, Ice Carbon Diablo X was easily the hardest of them. The difficult flying, and hard timings throughout the level was enough to deter many from trying. But eventually, almost exactly about a year after the level's release, Riot would become the first person to legitimately complete the level, taking him 6,500 attempts to do so. Oh my god! Oh my god! Ah! Oh my god! 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 And that concludes update 1.8. It was a truly exciting time, and people were excited for what the next update had to offer. And going into update 1.9, Ice Carbon Diablo X was still the hardest demon. But that wouldn't last long, because somebody who had previously held the hardest demon wanted to take it back. Majaka was back, and this time, he wanted to hold the hardest demon for the third time. 
Future Demoness easily was capable of doing so, with its early utilization of the wave game mode, as well as just being really difficult overall. The level would eventually get nerfed down, but in its unnerfed state, it was easily harder than Ice Carbon Diablo X. Future Demoness was not only visually appealing, but once again utilized gameplay that no one was really good at. And so, in its unnerfed state, nobody was able to beat it for a long time. It wasn't until October of 2016 when Atomic became the first victor of the unnerfed version, only taking him about 3,000 attempts to beat it. But it was still over a year after Majago had nerfed the level down to be more enjoyable. And upon nerfing the level, Future Demoness would lose all of the potential it had of being one of the hardest demons. That is, one of the hardest. Because the next level to claim the number one spot is arguably one of the most important levels ever made, and it supposedly took the creator 80,000 attempts to verify. The level in question is none other than Cataclysm. <laughs> On December 30th, 2014, Gboy uploaded the fourth preview for Cataclysm, showing off the fourth part in the new solo he had been working on. A little while after uploading the fourth preview though, Gboy had already supposedly been 80,000 attempts into the level, and eventually, Gboy decided to just hack Verified instead. No big deal, right? Well, yeah, actually. And going into 2015, Cataclysm would be released on January 3rd, and it would quickly get rated, as G-Boy is a very reputable creator for the time. And because of who G-Boy was, Robtop didn't really have to question the legitimacy of the verification. This was right before the time that legitimate verifications would start to really matter, because back then, if you were respected enough, you could just get away with hack verifying your levels, even if they were as hard as Cataclysm. And as time went on, nobody was able to beat it. It wasn't until February that people had claimed to have beaten it, but the only two videos that existed were both from obvious hackers, being Zora Zet and Lyra Bandicoot. The more believable completion was Zora Zet's, but he would later admit that his recording was speed hacked. And while it was pretty clear that the music stopping too early was a clear indication of speed hacks, some of the flying in the video was quite believable for the time. But a lot of the other flying was also pretty obviously not done by a human. As for Lyra Bandicoot, it was pretty much the same thing. Loss of music early on, and way too straight of flying to be done legitimately. And so, Cataclysm continued to not only be uncontested as the hardest demon, but would also go on without anyone being capable of beating it. But it turns out that we would only have to wait about three months as someone would finally complete the level legitimately on May 14th, 2015. But in almost the same week, there wouldn't be one victor, not two victors, there would be four of them. Before his confession, Cyclic was considered the first person to ever complete Cataclysm legitimately. And as with many other people, the community still isn't able to believe that he hacked all of his achievements, including this one. And so on May 10th, Cyclic was deemed the first victor of Cataclysm. But assuming that Cyclic's completion is hacked, the real honor of the first victor goes to Giro, when he completed the level four days later on May 14th. Also completing the level on stream, making his recording undeniably legitimate. The next two completions, however, both happened on the exact same day, only hours apart from each other. The first being Riot, with a beautiful reaction. And only a few hours after, Sandstorm would also complete the level. And upon Sandstorm's completion, it would make him the fourth victor of the level overall, including Cyclic. But after this, one of the victors of Cataclysm ended up catching the attention of some of the biggest creators in the game.
and just a few short weeks after completing Cataclysm, Riot was on the radar to verify a level that was set to dethrone Cataclysm to take the top spot. And not only was it heavily inspired by Cataclysm, but Riot was the only player in the game who had the skill set to match the level of skill required to be it. We are, of course, talking about Bloodbath. The first preview of Bloodbath was uploaded on June 2nd, with the first preview showcasing Crack's famous ship section, as well as the end of Evasion. The second preview featured Havoc's part, as well as Giron and G-Boy, but we didn't know that the last part was G-Boy's until later on. The second preview was also uploaded on the same day as the first one. There was also a trailer that was made, but far less known about. And once the level was finished, it was now up to Riot to verify it. The community was as excited as ever, as Riot would begin the most intense grind of his entire career. And almost all of it would be streamed live on his Twitch channel. So for the next two months, Riot's entire focus would go into trying to verify Blood. And this is how it went. Riot was only 6% away. All he had to do was pass G-Boy's part. And if he could, he would make history. The entire community was rooting for him, and they knew he could do it, and it was only a matter of when. And on August 12th, Riot would do the impossible. He did it. Riot had just legitimately completed one of the hardest levels ever made, to a live stream of over 5,000 live viewers. No one could believe it, and following the verification, an entirely new era of difficulty was born. At one point, people thought that Cataclysm would never be beaten, but now, a level five times harder than it had just been legitimately completed almost six months later. And upon Riot uploading Bloodbath to his account, the level was rated almost immediately. And just like that, Bloodbath was now the hardest demon in the game, and by a landslide as well. Nothing was even coming close to touching it. It was all by itself at the top. And for the following months, Bloodbath was still the hardest demon. There really wasn't anything that could touch it. It was all alone. Even though the race to beat Bloodbath was a very intense race, Nobody would even complete the level for an astonishing seven months, until Quasar became the first victor in March of 2016, taking him 28,000 attempts and months and months of work, also completing the level on stream. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's over! It's over! Get wrecked, sir! Get wrecked, sir! And after Quasar completed Bloodbath, it would continue to be the hardest demon for many months after. But in November, something was threatening the top spot, but it was only for a short period of time. Phobos was an extremely difficult 1.9 mega collab that was hosted by GMT Sean in May of 2015. A short while after the level was built, a player named Tigerzek, who was pretty well known in the community, claimed that he had verified Phobos. But as it would later be found out, Tigerzek had actually hack verified the level to get the level in. And upon it becoming featured, Phobos was, for a very short time, the hardest demon in the game, and was also harder than Bloodbath. So for a brief period, 
Phobos held the number one spot, but in barely under a week of its release, it was quickly discovered to have been hacked by a phone. And so, Phobos fell off immediately. It wasn't until May of the next year when a nerfed version of Phobos was verified legitimately by Kermal, better known as Crazyman50 back then. And so, Bloodbath was back on top, being completely uncontested once again. And at this point, it seemed like it would stay at the top spot for many years to come. But then, in August, Bloodbath was in trouble. Sukupan Hell was a fairly old 1.9 level that was built by the popular creator Nubas. The goal of the level was to make the hardest level he could build, and Sukupan Hell was the result. One thing to note is that Nubas had openly hack verified the level, uploading the level to the servers in June of 2015. But to his surprise, Robtop himself ended up deleting the level off the server. But it wasn't until August 14th of the next year that Trusto would be the first person to legitimately complete the level, and in the process, ending Bloodbath's year-long position as number one. Yes! I beat it! I beat it! I beat it! I beat it! But players weren't done pushing Bloodbath down the leaderboard. On November 5th, 2016, a creator named Xenity uploaded newly verified Athanatos to the servers for anyone to play. And although this wasn't verified legitimately, being obviously hacked by the controversial player Aurorus, the level still remained rated anyway. And with Athanatos being rated, for a small period of time, Athanatos had claimed the top spot. But only weeks later, something big was threatening the top spot. And it was coming fast. Sonic Wave was an incredibly difficult level, and while it had been rated in the past, it was only rated for a really short period of time, as it was found out to have been hacked by Cyclic. The original level is now referred to as Old Sonic Wave, but since Cyclic didn't really like the old version, he decided to delete the original level. But later, Cyclic posted a poll on the GW forums to have people vote for a new color scheme. The obvious favorite was Dark Blue, and so, on July 19th, Cyclic verified one of the most famous levels in all of Geometry Dash. At least, that's what everybody thought. Even though there's no concrete evidence anywhere in Cyclic's verification video, how could Cyclic have verified something this hard on a 60Hz laptop all the way back in mid-2015? To this day, there are only a handful of people who have completed Sonic Wave on 60Hz. So for the community to believe that Cyclic had done the same thing over half a decade ago was absolutely impossible. And as it turns out, the community was right. And on August 7th, Cyclic updated Sonic Wave to a Back on Track remake, now commonly referred to as Cyclic on Track. But eventually, Cyclic would end up deleting the level entirely. And for a while, everyone sort of forgot about it. While the race to beat Sonic Wave is easily the most interesting race in the game, every time someone would get closer than ever, the demotivation to come from the fails would lead them to the point of dropping the level entirely. It happened with Mifui, and later Riot. But in April of 2016, that would all change. Sonix was one of the best players in the entire game, and when people saw that he was going for Sonic Wave, people quickly became excited. With Sonix already having levels like Catabath, Athanatos, and many other levels completed, people knew that Sonix was more than capable of being the first person to be. All we could do was wait. And Sonix showed no signs of slowing down. Sonix was getting really close, almost as close as Riot and Mifui, but what Sonix had to do differently than everyone else who got this far was to just not give up. But on November 26th, Sonix had the best consistency on the level he's ever had, 
and all we could do was watch and hope. And to everyone's surprise, Sonix would follow through. Sonics had done it, and in barely over 35,000 attempts and almost 9 months of non-stop practice, Sonics became the first ever player to legitimately complete Sonic Wave. He never had to play the level again, and just like with Bloodbath and Sukuban Hell, the level became rated almost immediately after Sonics uploaded it to the servers. And for the first time ever, Sonic Wave was legitimately at the top spot. And though Artificial Ascent would claim the top spot for a very short time after Sonic Wave, it hardly counts. People quickly realized that Sonic Wave was definitely harder than Artificial Ascent, and so the change was reverted pretty fast. So once again, Sonic Wave was back on top. And going into 2017, Sonic Wave was still the hardest demon. But incredibly, right at the beginning of the new year, that would all change. Yara Garasu was an absolute titan of a level. The first time the community would get a glimpse of the full level was when Faison Let's Play uploaded a montage in March of 2016, compiling existing videos of individual parts into a full video of the level. And that was when we truly realized how hard this was. The unnerfed version of Yara Garasu is so difficult that it would still place in the modern top 10 if the level was verified today and only a handful of people have been able to pass CSX's brutal ship section in its under state. The original verifier for Yara Garasu changed quite a couple of times. When the level was being built, just like with Bloodbath, Riot was set to be the verifier for this level as well. But with concerns of growing hand pains and general boredom for the game, the level would instead be passed down to Serve, and for the time, Serve was one of the best. Serve would very quickly make impressive progress, getting 33% on the level in just 3 days of verifying. But eventually, Serve would begin to absolutely hate playing it, sometimes rage quitting the level on stream. Are you serious? I'm ending stream right now, I'm fucking- Uh, don't, don't mind me, I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh... Don't don't mind me, huh? Okay, let's, let's. Fuck! I didn't mean to do that. Fuck! 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 I just ruined it. Fuck! Fuck! No! No! <laughs> no! No! I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to exit out. And soon after, Serve quit verifying. Fortunately, though, the person he passed it on to was more than determined enough to beat it. The player was also the first victor of Sukup in Hell. Trusta is back. Fresh off the back of Sukup in Hell, and many other extremes, Trusta was ready to take on Yada Garasu. And for the rest of 2016, verifying Yada was Trusta's ultimate goal. And so, pretty much immediately after picking it up, that's exactly what Trusta was going to do.
five months and over 50,000 attempts later, Trusta had done it again. And upon the legendary verification, Yadagarasu instantly rose to claim the top spot. There was nothing that could touch it, and that's why it stood and stood and stood. For two months. In March of 2017, something was verified that was capable of taking the number one spot from Yadagarasu within only two months of Yada being on the throne. Created by Ilrel and Rustum, Erebus was a level that Ilrel had made solely to see how hard he could make a level. And Ilrel was able to finish all of the gameplay in only three days, with Rustum later decorating. And the result was a good looking extreme, with surprisingly good gameplay considering how fast it was made. And in December of 2016, practice would begin for Boldstep, as the previous verifier, Steels, had previously dropped it. And in February, Boldstep was already close to verifying. And sure enough, only about two weeks after getting 91%, Boldstep verified Erebus, taking him over 47,000 attempts to verify. Oh my god! I just verified Erebus! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! It was easily the hardest thing Boldstep had ever beaten, and with its inevitable feature, Erebus took the top spot from Yadagarasu only two months after Trusta had verified it. And while levels like Stalemate Redux and Digital Descent did claim the throne for a short time, both were deemed to be easier than Erebus, and fell down the list pretty fast when players realized that they were not as hard as people thought they were. But the next level to threaten the top spot was definitely harder. Plasma Pulse Finale was on a whole other level. Beginning in March of 2017, with progress being shown from Giron, which has since been deleted, people became excited pretty quickly. Plasma Pulse Finale was the final level in the Plasma Pulse series, which is a series of levels that Giron and Smokes both have shared ever since the release of the first one way back in June of 2015. And this one was said to be the hardest out of all of them, and one of the hardest timing demons in the game. And on October 29th, 2017, Smokes verified it. And counting lost copies, it surprisingly only took Smokes barely over 14,000 attempts, which is absolutely insane. And following the level being raided, Plasma Pulse Finale would stand at the number one spot for almost four months. But the next level to take the top spot would stand for way longer than four months. Being one of the most recognizable demons in the entire game, Bloodlust is nothing short of legendary. The creation of Bloodlust began about a month after Quasar had become the first victor of Bloodbath back in 2016, and from the previews that Quasar had shown, everyone had slowly begun to build up excitement. But unfortunately, Quasar would soon take a backseat from playing the game, and all of the hype for Bloodlust would die down. Everyone else might have forgotten about Bloodlust, but little did everyone know, the level ended up being passed to a rather unknown player, but he was far from bad. Being one of the early victors of Bloodbath, we are of course talking about Nobleboy. Pretty soon after Nobleboy had completed Bloodbath, he uploaded an announcement video on September 4th telling everyone that Bloodlust had not only been finished, but that now he was also the official verifier. And the excitement that people previously had was coming back. And in the beginning, Nobleboy progressed quickly. But what Nobleboy didn't realize was what he had just gotten himself into. And soon enough, an absolutely intense grind would ensue. And this is how it went.
It took almost two years and 120,000 attempts to verify, but with Novel Boy's level of determination, he never gave up. And in turn, Novel Boy made GD history forever. And unlike the last couple of levels to take the top spot, Bloodlust was solidified in the number one spot. And even though it would only take a month for somebody to beat it, when Skullo became the first victor in March, it was still an absolutely incredible achievement. Fuck everyone that didn't believe in me. Yeah. Fuck he beat it. Yeah. No one knew I'd do it. And as 2018 went on, Bloodlust was still the hardest demon in the game. And going into 2019, there was still nothing coming close to it. Until there was. In January of 2019, something was finally verified that could potentially take the number one spot away from Bloodlust. And as it turns out, it was much, much harder than Bloodlust. Zodiac was an absolute titan of a level, and for a while, nobody thought anyone would ever beat it. Started by Rico LP, Zodiac's history dates all the way back to 2017 when Rico LP showcased the first part in a video which has since been deleted. Eventually, though, the level would be finished and was set to be verified by Wuxi, who was at the time one of the best. But Wuxi would eventually drop it, leading to end level picking it up. But before end level could make any notable progress, end level and Bionox agreed to let a rather unknown player named Benji8080 give the level a go. And for a while, progress was slow but promising. But Benji2 would eventually drop it. And after the level going through Slack and later Diamond Splash, nobody seemed to be able to be good enough at the game to be. But in January of 2019, out of nowhere, somebody had done it. Xander556 had verified Zodiac in a daunting 61,000 attempts, and the community was amazed. Zodiac would later become raided, and Bloodlust was finally taken down. But there was a problem. Because Xander's Zodiac verification came out of nowhere, people became extremely skeptical about the verification. So much so that the level soon became on the verge of being unrated, for lack of legitimate verification. But since Technical had become the first victor in April, Technical could be considered the verifier. And because of the situation, Xander decided to just say it. In April of 2019, Xander admitted to hacking Zodiac and a large portion of the community wasn't really that surprised about it. Lack of clicks, raw footage, or anything like that made it pretty obvious for a good amount of people. The good news, though, is that since Technical had just become the first victor, the level wasn't on the verge of being unrated anymore, and could stay rated. And so, Zodiac was officially on top. And while Crimson Planet did get a small amount of time on the throne because of the situation, the level was at least able to shine for a little while. But regardless, Zodiac was back on top. A couple years before Zodiac rose to the top, Riot had plans of creating a 1.9 themed extreme demon that would defy all of the odds if somebody was able to verify it. It went through a lot of changes throughout its creation process, but once it was finished, Riot did a full showcase of the level in January of 2018. And to put it simply, its level of difficulty was on another level. This is Tartarus. Tartarus was absolutely ridiculous, and the community really had never seen something this difficult in Reach before. And it wouldn't take long for people to make progress either, as Riot had made the level an open verification to not only spice it up a bit, but also because the level was so ridiculously hard that it might arguably take longer if it went through multiple verifiers as opposed to the verification being a race. And indeed it was a race, because it wouldn't take long for the race to become really contested. And when it did, it only became more intense. And for the next two years, players all around the community would actively try to get as far as they could. And this is how it went.
After many years of players going back and forth, Tartarus had finally been verified. It was an unbelievable feat, but following the verification, Tartarus would have a strange problem. Molsey verified Tartarus on February 9th, 2020, but Dolphy had also supposedly verified the level on January 6th, an entire month before Molsey did. So why didn't Dolphy's version get rated? Well, like I mentioned before in the race to beat Tartarus, Dolphy was a highly suspicious player to Riot and the Demon List, but even with the growing suspicion from everyone, Dolphy wasn't ready to accept that fate, and for the following month after verifying Tartarus, Dolphy was able to prove his legitimacy with the Demon List by doing private live streams and being able to answer most of the questions that the Demon List had. And with Dolphy being legit, this led Molsey to make a big decision. Molsey could either keep his version of Tartarus rated even though he verified it after Dolphy, or Molsey could request to get his version unrated and hand it over to Dolphy. And in an act of true sportsmanship, Molsey decided that it was best to hand it over to Dolphy. And on February 18th, Dolphy's version would become the rated version. And with that, Tartarus was at the top spot. And for the coming months, Tartarus would be untouchable. How could someone beat something harder than that? As 2020 came to a close, Tartarus was still at number one. The only time Tartarus ever had a change in its list placement was when the Golden was deemed to be barely harder. But even then, the change was quickly reverted. Now being in 2021, the community wanted to try to take the top spot away from Tartarus. It wasn't going to be easy, but with the incredible skill evolution that players had, and the growing number of levels aimed to be top 1, Tartarus falling from the top spot was inevitable. There were levels verified that people had deemed to be harder, like Arcturus, but with these levels never getting rated, it seemed like it didn't even matter anymore. But there was one level that outshined everything else in not only its popularity, but also its difficulty. And this time, players were more than certain that it could take Tartarus down. Slaughterhouse is a brutal level, and trying to verify it seemed pretty much impossible for almost all of the player base. But considering the person who was set to verify it, it quickly fell into the realm of possibility. People were excited to see something finally dethrone Tartarus, but more than ever, the level had to get rated. There was already something arguably harder than Tartarus that just needed to be rated to push it down, and people were afraid that Slaughterhouse would suffer the same fate as Arcturus. But regardless of that, Space made really quick work, getting 49% in only two days after picking it up. And Space's inhuman pace wouldn't stop there, as he would get 92% five days after, dying at one of the last jumps. But the farther he progressed, the harder it got. And for the next month and a half, Space would have no choice but to endure the most intense grind he has ever done. And Space had the entire community rooting for him. All Space had to do was get 8 more percent. Here we go.
fucking reactor the lights, I'm gonna cough so much. Huh. Oh my god. The grind had come to an end. It took 41,000 attempts and countless hours of playing, but in the end, it all paid off. And now, all the community could do was hope for the level to get rated. But on October 29th, out of nowhere, something amazing happened. Arcturus, Firework, and Slaughterhouse all rated at the same time. If Arcturus alone being rated wouldn't take Tartarus off the top spot, this for sure would. Slaughterhouse and Firework would end up being placed over Tartarus on November 3rd, and that is where the hardest demon is today. But there's one more. Over the years, we've seen several levels that were formerly impossible on the top spot, but Sukupin Circles is easily one of the most mind-blowing. It took Diamond, the verifier, hundreds of thousands of attempts, and half a year of playing. I verified Sukupin Circles! What?! I just verified Sukupin Circles! I just verified it! I just And if that wasn't impressive enough, in the same day of the level being raided, somebody already completed it with Cursed being the first victor just eight days after the level came out, which is just phenomenal. I beat Scribble Circle! Yes! 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 And that yes! is where the hardest yes! demon is today. But I guarantee it's not going to stay that way. There are some levels that are potentially worthy of taking the top spot from Sukupin Circles, and for some of them, it would only be a matter if they get rated or not to push Sukubin Circles down. But will these levels ever get rated? We'll just have to wait and see. And as always, thanks for watching.